very warm welcome to all of you attending the De Vere Society Autumn Conference webinar. I'm Charles Beauclair. I'm honored and delighted to have been asked to introduce this venture, the first of its kind uh, for our society. Our collective thanks, I won't name anyone, but our collective thanks uh, are due to those who've devised the means uh, of gathering us together in the ether and who are holding us suspended here uh, in impeccable order, one hopes, uh, for the next few hours. Thanks also to those who have put this marvelous program together. And lastly, uh, our gratitude goes out to our speakers uh, and performers tonight, including our mystery guest. The De Vere Society, I'm glad to say, is in very good shape. Uh, the wind is in its sails. Um, we have many new ventures uh, afoot. There really is a sense of excitement and fresh purpose. There's also some marvelous research being done at the moment, groundbreaking research, in fact. And here at the risk of being invidious, I would like to mention uh, one individual, and that is our distinguished chairman, Alexander War, who over the past years has produced a string uh, of white rabbits from his top hat and astonished us all, and particularly in this field that we are discussing tonight of Edward de Vere and his literary contemporaries. So hats off to you, Alexander. Now the focus of the de Vere Society is Edward de Vere himself, whose name means prosperous guardian of the truth. And it is under the aegis of truth that we make our way. Our chief work in the society lies in bringing Edward de Vere before the public and introducing his story to our culture through every medium available to us. Not only is he our lodestar, but his story and his art, interwoven as they are, can be like a holy tree to inspire our ailing land. And it's important on this journey that we do not condemn those whose approach to the truth differs from our own. After all, we all share one overarching truth, De Vere's authorship. Ours is a high pinnacle pavilion. We are indeed a band of brothers and sisters ready and willing to shed, if not our blood, our ink copiously in the cause. Now, before I vanish, which I hope I shall, I'd like to say just one thing uh, about our protagonist. You remember that at the end of The Tempest, Prospero's final words, the last two word lines of the play are, as you from crimes would pardoned be, let your indulgence set me free. Now, this concept of indulgence was crucial to the Earl of Oxford, I feel. He didn't want us to make a shining icon of him. He wanted us to understand him wherever that understanding might lead. We can only set him free in this way. The dying Hamlet, begs his friend Horatio to draw his breath in pain to tell his story. Why? Because his is a painful story to tell, one you might say requiring indulgence. And for this, my fellow Horatios, all our voices are essential. Gentle breath of yours, my sails must fill, or else my project fails. Our conference, friends, is now open. Thank you.